On this week's episode of Film Fridays, we're going to talk about how to process your film scans. Let's jump right in. So far in this series, we've talked about how to get started in film, what to look for when you're looking for a camera, we've talked about how to load a camera, and we've talked a little bit about how to shoot film. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to process a film scan, and from the most part, most labs that are going to give you scans are going to give you color-corrected scans. You might find a boutique lab that might give you the raw files, the unconverted scans, so you could do that yourself. And also, when you get into scanning your own, which we're going to talk about in a later episode, you're going to have to do some of the techniques we're doing today. So, with that said, let's hop in and look at some film negative scans and show you guys how to convert them using Lightroom. If you are a Lightroom user, if you are an Adobe subscriber, you can use Lightroom and Photoshop to edit your photos. Now, there are plugins. There is a great plugin for film photographers called Negative Lab Pro. It's about $100 and it does a lot of this stuff for you. If you're somebody who's just dipping their toes into this, maybe you don't want to spend that much money on a plugin, this might be a good place to start. The other thing to note is I'm doing all this stuff in Lightroom, but the techniques are the same on any other photo editing software. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff in the curves editor to show you guys how to inverse the image and what to look for in edit and a couple of tips and tricks to make this whole process easier. So the first image that we're gonna start with is the black and white image. And this is arguably the easiest one to convert on Lightroom without any plugins and without any extra steps because this one is just a black and white image. So in our development, it is a good idea to always crop our image down. That's gonna help us really look at our meters and our histogram. The histogram definitely comes in handy here. And we're just going to do quick crop. I'm cropping out the sprockets because we really don't need them for this. If you want to keep them, you can keep them. That's fine. So now, as you can see, this image is inversed. Where we would have a normal image that our highlights are white and our shadows are black. In this case, our highlights are black and our shadows are white, or in this case, blue. So the first thing that you always wanna do is do a quick color treatment. I usually switch over to Adobe's monochrome because we're shooting in black and white, we don't need color anyways. You're not gonna have any color. So switch over to monochrome by clicking on black and white here. And now we can start adjusting. One thing to note, when you do inverse the curve, everything is going to be backwards. So your highlights are now gonna be your shadows. Your shadows are now gonna be your highlights. Your whites are now gonna be your black and your blacks are now gonna be your whites. It's a little bit of a job to get used to. So what I have started doing is I will adjust my exposure up here first. So I come in and I'll adjust my contrast. To where I want it to be and then I will pull my blacks down because I want to have a good amount of blacks and then I pull my whites up making sure that I'm actually pulling my whites I will adjust my shadows to where I think they're gonna be good keeping in mind that this half of the histogram is my highlights and this half of the histogram is my shadows and blacks. And now we're ready to work on the curve. So this is the easiest part. This is the part that you can build yourself a preset. You're gonna grab the top corner and you're gonna drag it all the way down. You're gonna grab, go to the other corner and you're gonna drag it all the way up. So now our image has been reversed and we can start editing. Now, I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about when everything's inversed. If I grab my exposure and I bring it to try and brighten it up, you can see that it's starting to darken that image. 
And if I go the other way, it's going to lighten that image. And this is what I mean by it is reversed. Now there is a way around this and it's a little bit more involved. There's a couple more steps. So it depends on how many photos that you've actually scanned if you wanna do this. I tend to not do this and just get used to everything being flipped because it's easier for me doing a lot of photos. If I, if I develop two rolls of film and now I have 78 exposures to go through, this next thing I'm gonna show you is not that great. But it do, does help if you are doing one-offs and wanna just flip everything and get a nice even exposure. So I'm gonna hit reset real quick. <clears throat> and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hit crop and crop down. This time I'm actually going to leave the sprockets visible for a little bit of added fun here and convert to black and white. And instead of doing anything else, I'm just gonna grab the curb and I'm gonna flip it. And we're gonna go like that. Now, I'm going to go and click edit in Adobe Photoshop. And what this is going to do is going to create a copy of that file with the adjustments that we just made in Adobe Photoshop and in Lightroom as a TIFF file, .tiff. And when Lightroom does this little handoff, what it will do is reset all of the settings. So in this case, if you really wanted to, you could go ahead and do this process, flip the image, do some adjustments to it, t send it over to Photoshop, and then once you're in Photoshop, all you're gonna have to do is quit. But what I wanna do first is, I wanna clean up this image. So we're gonna take and grab our brush, Control Command J to make a new layer, which I'm gonna name Repair. And we're just gonna adjust some of these little blemishes that are appearing on our image. All right, so there really wasn't any much to clean up there, but we cleaned up a little bit. Now, what we're gonna do is just hit save because it's already created that extra file. And now you can either close out of Photoshop, close the file, or just switch back to your Lightroom window. And you see you now have two files. We have our original um, DMG file, our ne digital negative, and we have our new TIFF file. And if you notice, so on our DMG, our curve has been flipped. On our TIFF file, everything's back to normal. And if I grab that exposure value now, it behaves like it should. So if trying to get your brain to work backwards is something that's a challenge for you, this is one way to do it. Um, I don't do it for every image. I do it for the images that I wanna work on more because I wanna print them. The images that you wanna finalize, this is definitely a great pro process to do. And if you're using Photoshop to do your cleaning up and your um, retouching, then it's just a natural process workflow anyways. Next, we're gonna work on a color negative. The color negative is a little bit more difficult because our image is gonna be vastly different from black and white. Remember, color negative film has a more orangish tone to it to begin with, and on top of that, we have our three colors to deal with, our blues, our reds, and our greens. So the process starts the same. We're gonna crop down, and this time I'm gonna leave a little bit of the sprockets visible for this first part. Because we're actually gonna use that to help us with our color correction. So I'm gonna grab this picker tool, 
And before I do that, I'm going to show you what happened if we inverse the curve right now. Um, if I pull this down here and pull this up here, as you can see, we have a very, very strong blue cast. And we want to try and remove as much of that as we can. So we're going to grab this picker and pick on the emulsion, the film negative itself. And that's going to help us get close. So now we're going to take and flip our curve. Make sure you grab the corners. And as you can see, we still have a blue cast, but it has been removed from the darkest areas. Um, the last thing I kind of want to do is drag this in to kind of even out this histogram a little bit more. So we can see that our reds, our greens, and our blues are kind of not lined up. And we can use the curves and watch the histogram to try and get that to where we want. Remember, remember that you know we're working in inverse, so we want to bring those greens down. We can bring them down to there, try to match them up in the middle there, and then same thing with the blues. I'm going to try and bring those down as much as I can. It doesn't look like we're going to get there with this. Now this is one of the problems that you're gonna run into doing this in Photoshop. And I'm just gonna drag this down until we get a good. That's, that's, that's close enough. We'll sit about there. So again, I'm gonna take this into Photoshop and do a quick retouching on the images. And then we'll have that TIFF file that we can then further refine. All right, so we're going to save this and we're going to go back into Lightroom. Now again, you see we've made a new file. It's a edit tiff. It's a .tiff file. And we can see that our curve is now back to normal. And now our color slider is also more in the middle. Now we have more color control over this. So, as you can see, color negatives are a little bit more difficult to work with. They're going to be something that you're going to have to play with. The scans have to be almost perfect in most cases for you to get a good image out of them. So you're going to have to play around with this a lot more than black and white. If you are someone that is shooting a lot of color film, then I highly recommend getting Negative Lab Pro. The software does an amazing job at converting color negatives and allows you to work quicker in this workflow. All right, guys, so hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Film Fridays. If you thought it was helpful, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you want to have, see more content and be notified when I put out new Film Friday episodes. And leave a comment down below with whether or not you want to shoot color or black and white film. I want to thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.